welcome back um, to the Bible Attic. <laughs> um, I'm having a great time. Um, little behind the scenes, I usually record three to four videos in one sitting. And so um, I'm having a great time. I mean, because it was just like not long ago. I just read chapter four for you guys. Um, I'm just like blown away. I love the Bible. <laughs> I'm one of those people. Like I read chapter four once and then like I'm blown away still. Like I'm so excited to be done recording so that I can go and uh, research chapter four verse 31. Um, so yeah, I'm one of those people. That's why God probably asked me to start this, uh, YouTube channel because dang it, this Bible is so exciting to me. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit my Bible. I love my Bible, but, um, chapter six, I just like relooked, you know, um, how long the chapter is pretty long and I have a lot of notes. So I may break it up into two parts unless I can talk really fast. So anyways, let's get started with chapter six. This is uh, Jerusalem's last warning. So um, <laughs> chapter six, verse one, run for your lives, you people of Benjamin, get out of Jerusalem, sound the alarm in Tokia, send up a signal at Beth Herakim. A powerful army is coming from the north, coming with this is this, this coming with disaster and destruction. Oh, Jerusalem, you are my beautiful and delicate daughter, but I will destroy you. <laughs> Enemies, I'm laughing because, oh my gosh. I can't, I, I guess I laugh because I can't wrap my head around that. Um, it's like that moment, like, where I always tell my kids, like, no matter whatever you do in this life, in your life, nothing will ever make me stop loving you. But I'm not going to um, accept everything that you do in your life sin wise. So and then when they're under 18, you have to discipline them. So I guess I laugh because it's like. I mean, I don't have a daughter, but, you know, I'll just change it for my situation. You are my beautiful and delicate son, but I will destroy you. <laughs> um, of course, I'm not going to destroy my kids, but it's like, um, like I tell them, I, you need a whooping? Like, I'm so serious. But um, anyways, enemies will surround you like shepherds camped around the city. Each chooses a place for his troops to devour. Yikes. Verse 4. They shout, prepare for battle, attack at noon. No, it's too late. The day is fading and the evening shadows are falling. When then, <laughs> sorry, verse 5. Well then, let's attack at night and destroy her palaces. This is what the Lord of Heaven army says. Cut down the trees for battering rams. Build, um, build siege, siege ramps against the walls of Jerusalem. Sorry, I'm like tongue-tied today. This is the city to be punished, for she is wicked through and through. She spouts evil like a fountain. Her streets echo with the sound of violence and destructions. I always see her sickness and sores. Listen to this warning, Jerusalem, or I will turn from you in disgust. Listen, or I will turn you into a heap of ruins, a land where no one lives. Holy cow. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Even the few who remain in Israel will be picked over again. And when a harvester checks each vine a second time to be picked, the grapes that were missed. I'll take a drink of tea for that. Oh, nothing to see here. Ver verse 10. Um, the header says Judah's constant rebellion. Oh, Judah. 
I tell you. Verse 10, to whom can I give warning? Who will listen when I speak? Their ears are closed and cannot hear. They scorn the word of the Lord. They don't want to listen at all. So now I'm filled with the Lord's fury. Yes, I am tired of holding it in. I will pour out my fury on children playing in the streets and on gatherings of young men, on husbands and wives, and on those who are old and gray. Their homes will be turned over to their enemies, as will their fields and their wives. For I will raise my powerful fist against the people of this land, says the Lord. From the least to the greatest, their lives are ru ruled by greed. From prophets to priests, they are all frauds. They offer superficial treatments for my people's mortal wounds. <sighs> that was a lot. Like, I think I could spend two hours just from verse 10 to 14. So, um, dang, I feel like, <laughs> you see, I didn't even realize, like, I kept, like, rubbing my shoulders because it's, like, I'm tense. Like, I feel when I read, my shoulders go up and up and up. <laughs> and I have to, like, remember to relax my shoulders when I'm reading because it's, like, for me, it's so intense. Like, that's crazy. The study Bible for verse set 10 says, The people became angry and closed their ears. They wanted no part of God's commands because living for God did not appear very exciting. As in Jer Jeremiah's day, people today dislike God's demand for disciplined living. As unsettled as people's responses might be, we must continue to share God's word. Our responsibility is to present God's word. Their responsibility is to accept it. <laughs> we must not let what people want to hear determine what we say. Oh my gosh. Yes and amen. That's, I mean, this is, I mean, <laughs> you have to tell people when they're in sin. Verse 14 says, they, they offer superficial treatments for my people's mortal wounds. And in the um, study Bible, it says, ignore it and maybe it will go away. Sound familiar? This was Israel's response to Jeremiah's warnings. They kept listening to predictions of peace because they did not like Jeremiah's con condemnation, condemnation of their sin. But denying the truth never changes it. What God says always happens. Sin is never removed by denying its existence. We must confess to God that we have sinned and ask him to forgive us. Sorry, I'm like a broken record. I feel like I keep saying that, like repent, repent, repent. Um, it's the biggest scheme the enemy has for us. Um, your sin is greater than God. Do not repent. You're, you have too much pride. Um, God won't forgive you. Um, it's whatever he can do to keep us in chains. We must repent. This is why I'm super pumped and excited for this new um, helping women who have had abortions to be free. Um, free of, of their guilt and shame and of that choice. Um, so I'm excited because the enemy wants to keep you in chains. He does not want you to repent. So repent. <laughs> My gosh. I need a new hashtag like hashtag repent. Um, to finish for, verse 14. It says they give assurances of peace when there is no peace. Verse 15. Are they ashamed of their disgusting actions? Not at all. They don't even know how to blush. That's like we're literally living that today. Um, people coming out as gay. Um, they're, they're cheered upon. Um, they walk down the streets and with their heads held high, they do not blush. God is like, that's disgusting. Um, the women shouting, um, 
shouting in like victory that they've had abortions and crowds cheering for them that's disgusting um i feel like um especially here in california they're trying to just like normalize pedophilia disgusting um we're gonna come to a point where people are gonna come out and start talking about how they love um children and they're gonna want to marry them it, mark my words it's gonna happen because they're already trying to push the normalization of um they're starting with teenagers like 14 year olds with adults um the push is happening it's 2020 and a lot of us turn our nose up in disgust of that but pretty soon they're gonna have a cheering crowd too and they're gonna have people chanting like we should be able to marry whoever we want i know i'm going on a tangent right now but it's true like we are living in disgusting disgusting times right now and the bible says they're not even ashamed they don't even know how to blush like this this is in jeremiah's day and we're in 2020 and we're still going through the same thing verse 15 therefore they will lie among the slaughtered they will be brought down when i punish them says the lord um judah rejects the lord's way verse 16 this is what the lord says stop at the crossroads and look around ask for the old godly way and walk in it so i have um highlighted stop look around ask and walk in it so those are i don't know if you can see right here so i highlighted those words um those were highlighted to me personally and i kind of got oh my gosh i'm a horror i do not know how to draw i mean obviously you're gonna see I had this vision of um, a road and then, you know, it's like the fork in the road, that saying. So it's like you're going along this path and then it's like, stop, look around, ask for the old godly way and walk in it. So I feel like whenever you come at a crossroads because we go through many crossroads in our lives that God is saying we just need to stop sometimes. Just stop. There's no need to go ahead if you don't know because that's how you're going to get lost. Um, and I put in my own writing right here says in making decisions, not feeling restful. Maybe you took the wrong path. So like I said, um, when we go, 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 go without stopping and seeking the Lord's wisdom, the Holy Spirit's wisdom, we're going to take the wrong path because that's the path we want to take. And then we're going to be tired. We're going to not have the peace, God's peace. Um, we're going to be in turmoil. And then what's going to happen? You're going to have to make a U-turn and go all the way back to... to <laughs> where you were and god's telling us right here in jeremiah verse 16 stop at the crossroads and look around just wait look around ask for the old godly way and walk in it travel its path and you will find rest for your souls but you reply no that's not the road we want We make our lives harder than they really should be. Verse 17. I posted watchmen over you who said, listen for the sound of the alarm. But you replied, no, we won't pay attention. Verse 18. Therefore, listen to this, all you nations. Take note of my people's situation. Listen, all the earth. I will bring disaster on my people. It is the fruit of of their own schemes because they refuse to listen to me they have rejected my word there's no use offering me sweet frankincense from sheba sheba side note is located in southwest um arabia was a center of trade in incense and spices used in 
pagan religious rituals. God is like, do not bring me that disgusting incense. So, so like, Sheba was not good because that was the pagan. Like, don't, don't even try to offer that to God. Keep your fragrant calamus imported from distant lands. I will not accept your burnt offerings. Your sacrifices have no pleasing aroma for me. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I will put obstacles in my people's path. Hmm. Fathers and sons will both fall over them. Neighbors and friends will die together. Let's drink some tea on that one. Hmm. I promise you, I did not remember that's what that said. As I showed you my horrible drawing of the crossroads, literally, when we're going down that different path that God um, did not choose for you, he literally said it. Verse 21, I will put obstacles in my people's path. Whoa, if you don't know the Bible, that's why you don't know how to live life. Literally, the biggest lie is there's no instructions for raising kids. There's no instructional book for life. Oh my gosh, it says life. This is your instruction book, people. That's the biggest lie. Don't believe it. It's literally like right here. This is golden life, like lessons, how to live your life. Do not believe in the enemy's lie. <laughs> Verse 22. This is what the Lord says. Look, a great army is coming from the north. A great nation is rising up against you from far off lands. They are armed with bows and spears. They are cruel and show no mercy. They sound like a roaring sea as they ride forward on horses. They are coming in battle formation, planning to destroy you, beautiful Jerusalem. We have heard reports about the enemy. And we bring our hands in fright. Sorry, sorry. Let me reread verse 24. We have heard reports about the enemy and we wring our hands in fright. Pangs of anguish have gripped us like those of a woman in labor. Don't go out into the fields. Don't travel on the roads. The enemy's sword is everywhere and terrorizes us at every turn. Oh, my people, dress yourself in burlap and sit among the ashes. Mourn and weep bitterly as for the loss of an only son. For suddenly the destroying armies will be upon you. Jeremiah, I have made you a tester of metals that you may determine the quality of my people. They are the worst kind of rebel full of slander. They are as hard as bronze and iron and they lead others into corruption. The bellows fiercely fan the flames to burn out the corruption, but it does not purify them, for the wickedness remains. I will label them rejected silver, for I am the Lord and discarding them. It's really sad. Verse 29 and 30, um, Study Bible says, As God tested the people of Judah, however... He could not find no purity in their lives. That's really, really sad. Um, I won't, I don't know YouTube that well. So it's like, I don't want to say celebrities names, I guess. But um, I kind of went down a rabbit hole the other day on this girl who used to be on like Disney as a little girl and she's just came out with a new album and it's chock full of just Satanism. Like there's no denying it. She's blatantly showing who she worships. Like it is so satanic. Like I felt like I needed a shower after it. It was really, really bad. I went through her Instagram and then it kind of led me down like, um, some other famous people and they're they're pretty young you know i'm 40 so you know probably in their 20s super popular artist um singers and um pure satanists like they don't even hide it 
and all of these young people just idolized them and it made me so sad and um and it's hard when you idolize someone to believe that they would be Satanists. Like, I'm sure tons of Christian kids and teenagers and young adults, like, worship these people. And then it's hard. Like, oh, it's just an act. No, they're, they're in our face now. And it just, that just reminded me of, like, God is going to make them go through some, some trying times to see if they'll come back to him. And he says, but it does not purify them for the wickedness remains. And I see it. I see it. It's really, really sad. So we need to be really careful on who do we, who do we idolize? Because obviously we shouldn't even be idolizing them, but maybe it'll be a wake up call. Like, who do you look up to in that should I be really looking up to that person? You know, is this person godly? Look at their actions. Look at what they're posting, um, especially these celebrities, because they're they're all in a, a cult. So um, I really challenge you on this episode to look at who you look up to. And... Ask God, ask God. Maybe that if you're not at a crossroad right now in your life, maybe that could be your your crossroad. Um, by asking God, who who do you want to highlight to me, Father, that I idolize? Um, who's your idol that you need to stop, look around, ask, and walk in God's way? I'm excited for you. Like, hopefully he speaks to you in a loud way that you will actually listen. And um, discipline is good. Doesn't feel good. But discipline is what we need. And um, hopefully you do have some eye-opening experiences on who you've been idolizing. And, and that they are actually on Satan's side. And that you can sadly loosen your grip and let that person go i say sadly because you know it's like um when i stopped watching tv it was it was sad but you do it in obedience and and uh, you get over it real quick and once you stop idolizing um and having the blockage for blessings to come down the blessings start raining down once you start letting go of your idols and um as in people or in physical things um, are your idols and um, just watch the blessings come down one by one or five at once, like whatever. I am living proof. It's just blessing after blessing. Um, once you start letting go of those things and walking in obedience, it's nonstop. It's amazing. So I hope that gives you peace and the challenge called a challenge for a reason because it's going to be challenging <laughs> so um i'll be praying for you guys um and that that god is just gonna blow your mind and uh, that's my hope for you guys so that's the end of uh chapter six and see you in chapter seven